This is the third video about trigonometry in the unit circle, and this one is called Three Trig Identities and Why They Make Sense. I really want you to focus on trying to understand why these formulas make sense instead of just trying to memorize them. If you try to memorize them, it might last you two days, it might last you a week in your memory, but it will not last you long term. If you understand why they make sense, then they will last a lot longer in your memory. So I'm going to bring it back to the Pythagorean theorem. One of those things that almost everybody who has learned it remembers because it's so simple to remember. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the squares of the two legs of a triangle are equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Well, we see a lot of triangles pop up in the unit circle. Because if you, keep, if you imagine the, this dot as a point on the edge of the circle, and this dot as the center of the circle, then you can continue drawing, and you'll have part of the circle. Part of the circle. So this triangle now let's imagine as the inside and inside part of the unit circle. Now when we look at this, we remember from the first video that C, the hypotenuse, is always equal to 1. It's the unit circle because the hypotenuse equals 1. So c equals 1. So underneath c squared, I'm going to write 1. And I could write 1 squared, but 1 squared is 1. Well, what is a? a is how much I moved to the side. And how much we move to the side is our cosine, our adjacent value. So a equals the cosine. Underneath a squared, I'm going to write, instead of a, cosine squared. And I'll put x, or you could put theta for the angle. And the last part, b, the other side, is how much we moved up and down, our height, and that's our sine. So underneath b squared, we put sine squared of x. You know, this is a right triangle because it has this 90 degree angle. And so, this formula, cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, and a lot of times you'll see it written the other way around, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. It's just another way of writing the Pythagorean theorem for the unit circle. And it will show up a lot in calculus. You'll need to remember it to use it to transform limits so that you can actually evaluate them. And that's not the only time we'll use it, but it's 1. Well, there's two other formulas that people sometimes try to memorize separately. You should not try to memorize them separately because they're connected back to this first one. So if you know this first formula, and you can remember that, then you should be able to figure out the other two. Because the second one, we get by dividing this by sine squared x. So we're going to divide every single part by sine squared x. When we do that, the first term is going to become 1, because we divided sine squared x by itself. So we have 1. The fraction is a whole. Cosine squared x divided by sine squared x. How would we write that? Well, if you're a little shaky on trig, you might not remember, but actually sine over cosine is another way of writing tangent. Cosine over sine is another way of writing the cotangent. Cotangent. So we can write this as the cotangent squared of x. And 1 over the sine squared of x. How would I write that? That's equal to the cosecant squared of x. That's by definition what cosecant means. It means 1 over sine. So this is just a definition. And there you have the second formula that you can use. Last one, we divided everything by sine squared x here. Let's try dividing everything by cosine squared x. Very similar. We have one piece, we'll cancel to make one whole. Sine squared x over cosine squared x. It's not cotangent, because that was the opposite. This time it's tangent. And what is 1 over cosine squared x? 
how do we write that? We write it as the secant, S-E-C, square root of x. And there's your third formula. So what do they all have in common? If you're looking for patterns, all three of these formulas have one, the number one in it. All three of them are dealing with squared, and all three of them have a sum in it. But they're all connected back to the Pythagorean theorem and the fact that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I hope this helps you understand why they make sense and why you only really need to memorize the first one because you can use it to find out the other two.